Hello, my name is Julie Felposch and I'm a master's student with the Swine Nutrition team at Kansas State University. This abstract is entitled The Effects of Dietary Zinc Oxide and Chlorotetracycline on Nursery Pig Growth Performance. Over the next few minutes, I will be sharing with you the growth data from a national pork board funded project which explored the effects of feeding antibiotics and alternatives to antibiotics on methicillin resistant Staph aureus bacteria prevalence in swine. Methicillin resistant bacteria is primarily a human health concern, but there are questions regarding whether the feeding of antibiotics and alternatives to antibiotics, such as heavy metal microminerals, has an effect on increasing the prevalence of antibiotic resistant bacteria through selective pressure. There is much research to support that feeding pharmacological levels of zinc from zinc oxide to nursery pigs improves their growth. Since feed grade antibiotics entered this scene in the 1950s, research has also demonstrated that chlorotetracycline, hereafter denoted as CTC, fed to nursery pigs improves both their growth rates as well as their feed efficiency. This leads to the question, are the benefits of feeding zinc oxide and CTC additive? Well, a 2001 NCR42 Swine Nutrition Committee study showed additive effects of feeding zinc oxide with an antimicrobial carbidox on nursery pig gain and feed intake. Work by Staley and others in the 1980s showed that feeding another heavy metal, copper, from copper sulfate, along with CTC in the diets, could have an effect on um, improving nursery pig growth performance. Thus, our objective here was to compare the effects of feeding added zinc from zinc oxide alone or in combination with a low or high dose of CTC on nursery pig growth performance. These high and low doses of CTC correspond to therapeutic and subtherapeutic feeding levels as designated by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. 240 nursery pigs were used in this study. They initially weighed 6 kilograms of body weight when they were weaned at 21 days of age. On day 5, pens of 5 pigs were allotted to one of 6 dietary treatments, balanced on average pen weight in a randomized block design with 8 replications per treatment. The 47-day trial was conducted at the K-State Segregated Early Wean Barns located in Manhattan, Kansas. All pigs were fed a common pelleted starter diet for the first five days. This diet contained no antimicrobial nor any added zinc beyond that contained in the trace mineral premix. Then, from days 5 to 26, pigs were fed the experimental treatments. Because FDA guidelines prohibit feeding therapeutic levels of CTC for this long, on day 15, the CTC was removed for one day only from the diets of the pigs that were fed the high CTC diets. CTC was then re-added the following day and included in the respective treatment diets for the remainder of the three-week period. Finally, from days 26 to 47, a common diet with no added zinc oxide nor CTC was fed to all pigs for an additional 21 days to evaluate any carryover effects from the previous treatment diets. Each pen contained a dry feeder and a nipple water in order to provide ad libitum access to feed and water. The pigs in the feeders were weighed on days 5, 26, and 47 to calculate average daily gain, the average daily feed intake, as well as the gain to feed of the pigs. This growth data was analyzed using the PROC mix procedure of SAS as a 2 by 3 factorial in a randomized complete block design using PEN as the experimental unit. It is important to note that there were no zinc oxide by CTC interactions with P greater than 0.12. The six treatment diets that were analyzed were 1. A corn soybean meal based negative control. Second, this control diet with the addition of CTC at 55 milligrams per kilogram of complete diet, which is the subtherapeutic feeding level. The third diet consisted of the control diet with the addition of 441 milligrams per kilogram of CTC, 
which is the therapeutic feeding level, and three more diets consisting of the control plus 2,500 parts per million zinc from zinc oxide, as well as 0, 55, or the 441 milligram per kilogram C2C inclusion. These diets were all prepared at the K-State feed mill and fed in meal form. So the pigs were fed these typical corn soybean meal based experimental diets and in order to achieve the appropriate levels of the added zinc and CTC, the treatment con diets contained either 0 or 0.35% of zinc oxide in the diet as well as either 0, 0.05 or 0.41% of a CTC 50 product both substituted for an equivalent amount of corn in the respective treatment diets. During the study, the diets were formulated to have an SID lysine level of 1.4% for the first five days, 1.35% in all six of the experimental diets, which were fed from days 5 to 26, and 1.22% in the common diet fed during the last 21 days of the trial. All the amino acids were formulated to either meet or exceed the 2012 NRC requirements of these nursery pigs. The ME values um, slightly decreased during the phases of the trial, and as you recall, the corn inclusion varied slightly amongst the six treatment diets, and thus the ME values of those six experimental diets had a slight range from 3,263 to 3,287 kcals per kilogram. However, the crude protein of all six of the treatment diets was formulated to be 22.1%, and that of the final common diet was a bit lower at 21.4%. As shown by diet analysis, the basal zinc levels in all the diets were around 200 parts per million. Now this zinc is coming from zinc oxide within the trace mineral premix, as well as endogenous zinc in the other uh, diet ingredients. Then, for the three experimental uh, treatment diets containing the added zinc oxide, we see that the final concentration of those were about 2,900 parts per million zinc. As we move into the results, recall that there were no interactions between the zinc and the CTC, so we will simply be looking at the main effects. In this slide and in future slides, our growth parameter is depicted here on the vertical axis and expressed in grams. Well, along the horizontal axis, we have our six treatment diets denoted with the control in yellow and the three diets containing the added zinc oxide in blue. The lighter green and the lighter blue bars here denote our subtherapeutic feeding level of the CTC, while our darker green and our darker blue bars denote the therapeutic level of the CTC. There was no difference in the growth of the pigs during the first five days of the trial when the common pelleted starter diet was fed. And so we'll jump right into looking at the growth performance of these pigs during the treatment period from days five to 26. We see here that pigs fed zinc oxide had about an 8% improvement in their average daily gain during the treatment period with P less than 0 0.001. Similarly, the pigs fed CTC also had a linear increase in their average daily gain as the CTC inclusion increased in the diets with P equal 0 0.002. We observed about a 4% improvement in the average daily gain due to the subtherapeutic feeding level of CTC. Well, there was about a 7% improvement in the average daily gain due to the feeding the high level of CTC. During the same period when these pigs had these improved growth rates, we also observed an increase in feed intake, with zinc oxide increasing feed intake about 8% with P less than 0 0.001. Likewise, the pigs fed CTC also had a linear increase in their feed intake with P equal 0 0.02, with the high level of CTC giving us about a 4% improvement in average daily feed intake. Thus, the pigs fed the zinc plus the high CTC had the highest feed intake. 
Because we observe both the increased growth rates as well as the increased feed intake, it is not surprising that neither zinc oxide nor CTC had any effect on gain to feed during the treatment period from days 5 to 26. So what happens though when the zinc oxide and CTC are removed from those pigs' diets? Well, from days 26 to 47, when the common diet was fed, there was no difference between the growth rates of pigs that had previously been fed zinc oxide and or CTC in their diets. Similarly, when the common diet was fed, there was no difference be between the feed intake of the pigs previously fed zinc oxide and or the CTC in their diets. However, due to a very low level of variation across all six of our experimental diets, we picked up a slight decrease in feed efficiency of the pigs previously fed the pharmacological zinc oxide with P equal 0 0.03. Now looking at the combined performance of the pigs across both the three-week treatment period as well as the subsequent three-week common period, we see that overall the pigs fed zinc oxide maintained an increased average daily gain with P equal 0 0.04, while the pigs fed CTC tended to have an increased gain as CTC inclusion level increased with P equal 0 0.06. Similarly, we observed that overall from days 5 to 47, the pigs fed the added zinc oxide still had increased average daily feed intake with P equal 0 0.02, while the pigs fed CTC tended to have a linear increase in feed intake as the CTC inclusion increased with P equal 0 0.06. Lastly, looking at overall feed efficiency, there is no effect of zinc oxide. However, the gain to feed of pigs fed CTC tended to increase, then decrease, as the CTC level increased with P equal 0 0.07. In summary, during the treatment period when zinc oxide and CTC were included in the diets, both average daily gain and feed intake increased, but there was a minimal effect of either of those ingredients on feed efficiency. This agrees with previous copper research that I alluded to earlier and collectively suggests that the effects of CTC and heavy metals is additive. Additionally, the linear response to CTC indicates that maximum growth benefits may not be realized from feed CTC at current FDA levels. In closing, there is no beneficial effect of zinc oxide or CTC on subsequent nursery pig performance. However, the benefits from the treatment period were maintained to the end of the trial. I would like to thank the National Pork Board for funding this project and thank you for listening through this podcast. Again, my name is Julie Falfash, and I'd be more than happy to answer any questions you may have regarding this study. My email is listed here, jfeldposh at ksu.edu. Have a great day.